One got knocked down, he won't get up again The other went knocked him down One got knocked down, and now he's fucking dead The other went knocked him out Combo Breaker! Ninjas are so badass, sneaking through the darkness and killing people while other while they remain completely unseen, for the most part that is. I'm looking at you Ryu Hayabusa. But today I have 8 ninjas that are going to fight in a free for all to see who's the best ninja of all. So let's go through the roll call. We have Batman, the Dark Knight, Leonardo the Ninja Turtle, Genji the Cyber Ninja of Overwatch, Ibuki the Stealthy Street Fighter, Knives, Scott Pilgrim's ex-girlfriend, Scorpion the Netherrealm Ninja, Raiden the Psycho Cyborg Ninja, and Strider the A-Class Strider. Alright, with this huge roster, let's just hop right into the analysis. Let's start with Knives Chow, Scott's ex-girlfriend. And while well, there isn't much for her story, she's an 18-year-old Chinese girl who loves Scott, but Scott had eyes for Ramona. So some drama, a drunk makeout session between Knives and Kim, and she got over it. So power-wise, she only really has minor amounts of Tomb Force that... But she makes up for this with her weapons and skills. So obviously Knives wields, well, two very large knives. Unfortunately, she's not out, allowed outside help, so a lot of her special moves like lesbian kiss and second cup of coffee are not allowed, but she does have some special, special moves she can perform by herself. With her super attack, she puts out both of her blades and spins, doing a double lariat style attack. She also has the reverse roundhouse kick and a triple exploding knife throw. However, if she needs a bit more power, she has a flying kick where she flies forward and kicks her foe. However, this move often misses. Now, Knives actually has some pretty great strength feats. She was un once able to har uh, harm Ramona by cutting her face. However, Ramona was holding back and Knives was going all out, so you can't scale her fully. Although she is, uh, although she is incredibly fast, she's actually able to catch up to Ramona and even outmaneuver her with acrobatics. She's also able to survive attacks from certain evil exes such as Todd, who slapped the highlights out of her hair. And Knives does, Knives is incredibly smart. She does well academically, she's knowledgeable in fighting, but she isn't the most mature, self-aware, or socially inept person. And she isn't exactly clear-headed in a fight either, and she'll rush someone down rather than taking this advantage of surprise. From one female ninja to another, let's talk about Ibuki. And just like every other Street Fighter character, I have no real good way of explaining her story because it's weird. So I guess we'll just move right into her special attacks and items. Ibuki can teleport and manipulate her key to create afterimages. Ibuki also carries kunai and exploding kunai. She also carries some bombs. Now Ibuki comes fully equipped with an arsenal of special moves. The Thunder Strike is a powerful key explosion punch usually targeted at the opponent's ribs after she grabs someone's arm. She, can also, she also has a bunch of other attacks, like the ability to create after images after dashing forward. She also has the Neck Breaker, where she slides past her foe, jumps up, wraps her legs around their head, and spins in a weird like fashion and then sends them flying with a neck snap. She also has this like Ball of Key Charge Punch attack, which can destroy projectiles, and she has a teleport that leaves a log behind. She also has the power that uh, this power where she uses this key ball to attack in a massive uh, with a massive size and destroy your foes. Ibuki is strong enough to fight Karen in a head in a head to head, and she's uh, Sakura's rival. Now Ibuki is also incredibly quick, as she can dodge surprise attacks from Karen and even dodge Hadoukens from Sakura. And she's tough enough to survive attacks from Sakura. Ibuki is incredibly skilled in ninjutsu, but she can be stubborn and petty, and that's never a good thing in any fight, and it usually gets her into pretty bad situations. Let's talk Batman. He's back from his match with all four Ninja Turtles, but today we have a different incarnation of Batman. We're doing the post-crisis version, and y'all know Batman's storyline, so let's just move into his power, skills, and equipment. Batman wears his trusty Batsuit that's useful for blocking stabs and bullets to some extent. He also carries flash, smoke, and gas bombs, as well as a grappling hook, a radio tracker, and his uh, Batarangs that come in normal and explosive varieties, as well as Oh, and shock varieties, as well as shock gauntlets that he can use to, you know, punch the ever-loving shit out of his opponents and electrocute him at the same time. Batman is also known for all, uh, has also knows all martial arts and is a master of stealth. And Batman's pretty strong too, as he's strong enough to fight Bane, Killer Croc, Katana, and he's kicked the, he's kicked down doors before, which is pretty impressive. Batman's also able to fight Katana, who can dodge bullets. <laughs> And he's a super genius, and, has give, and if given prep time, he can beat almost anyone, as he's considered the second smartest person on the planet, next to Lex Luthor. Now, Batman's also pretty durable, as he survived beatings from Bane, other than the spine durability test, and then he even survived that one, and even some attacks from Deathstroke. But Batman is human, enough physical damage, or enough bullets, or stabs, or whatever you want to put on there, will kill him. So, and you know, for this fight, just a quick note, we're moving his no-killing rule, because otherwise he'd stand no chance at victory. Alright, from Batman to his previous opponent, but this time I'm using the 4Kids cartoon version of Leonardo as he's got much better stats. 
However, I'm not allowing his dragon or key powered forms just for balance reasons. So Leonardo wields du dual katanas and he has some ninja stars. He's strong enough to kill, uh, com kill complete carnage, match the shredder blow for blow in a sword fight, and he can hold a T-Rex's mouth open while it bites down. Leonardo's fast enough to dodge lightning bolts and attack, uh, and attack from the shredder, and he's able to survive attacks from other mutants who have had the power to shake all of New York City. And Leonardo's a genius. He's, mas he's a master in stealth, distraction, and he's learned to seamlessly fight with multiple martial arts and multiple weapons. And he's, matched to, he's even managed to outmatch the Shredder in a sword fight, as well as hand-to-hand -hand combat before. Now it's time for Scorpion, the ninja from the Nether Realm, an eternal rival to Sub-Zero, until he joined him up in another Mortal Kombat. You know what? Mortal Kombat's storyline is complicated, so let's just move into his powers and whatnot. Scorpion can manipulate and control fire, and, you know, he's actually, he can even control the stronger Hellfire. He can also create fire clones and, uh, for a single attack, he can teleport, and he's 100% immune to fire. He can also bring him, uh, himself and others into the nether realm where he gets stronger the longer he's in there with no limit. Scorpion also carries two swords and a dart attached to a long chain that he uses to pull in people for vicious combos. I would cover his special moves, but most of them are self-explanatory like fireballs and stuff like that, so there's no reason to waste time. Scorpion is brutally strong as he's uh, defeated Liu Kang, Nightwolf, Cyrax, killed Sub-Zero, and he's even beaten Sector, and more recently, and you know, a better feat, as he's defeated Quan Chi and Raiden. Scorpion's also quick enough to dodge attacks from and fight Sub-Zero in a rather close battle, and he's strong enough to survive beatings from Sub-Zero and Quan Chi. Scorpion's also a master fighter, as he's, mas he's mastered in close range, uh, close range vicious fighting style, and is skilled enough to take out and kill other MK combatants. Now on to Genji, the Cyber Ninja of Overwatch. Genji wields an unlimited amount of shurikens and his signature Dragon Blade. Genji can slash his opponents with a dash, or he can deflect project all projectiles with his sword. He even, uh, if he needs some extra power, he can call upon uh, the dragon to increase his power, his cutting power anyway, with the Dragon Blade. Genji can easily go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Over Overwatch's toughest heroes like Winston, and his sword is capable of blocking full-on tank shells. Genji is fast enough to deflect Widowmaker and Bastion Gunfire, and he can continuously run circles around Doomfist who could dodge point-blank Tesla shots from Winston. Genji has survived beatings from Overwatch's toughest heroes like Winston and every other heavy hitters, but despite his former career, uh, career he's kind of frivolous and he's ex in, I mean, he's extremely capable in combat, and he's a great ninja and all, and he's able to even throw ninja stars at perfect accuracy and even dodge Hanzo's arrows. But he can get incredibly cocky and reckless if he, uh, you know, if he's let loose in battle for too long and does too well. Dude, Strider is one crazy mofo. Like, you know this, you know that guy who graduates early from like high school or something. You're like, damn. Well, Strider is the youngest person to ever reach the A class Strider, and damn, dude, does he deserve it? He's crazy. He's like that kid who graduated like 17 years early. Now, it's no wonder why he made it so far with the powers and weapons he has. Strider has a sixth sense that he uses to dodge incoming attacks, and he can create electromagnetic fields that he uses to reflect incoming projectiles. His blade can be enhanced with fire and ice, and he can summon intangible versions of himself and even slow down time. He does carry his Cypher Sword, which is basically a lightsaber and ninja sword hybrid. He also carries Kunai. He also has a multitude of robot helpers, like flying robo-birds with grenades, a, robot, a bunch of robot panthers, and uh, he has these two little small like satellite thingies that fly around and shoot laser discs. Now Strider is super strong. He's strong enough to crush a gravity core, chop a human in half with his hands, and slash through mechanical dragons with his cypher blade. Strider's fast enough to dodge lightning and shadow tag bullets, which are like anti-aircraft bullets, but built to hit him. Now Strider is also tough enough to survive being shot, stabbed, and even fighting high-powered robots. He's also highly trained in combat and tactical fighting. Ah, right in the Mecha Ninja from Metal Gear who uses absolutely zero stealth. I mean, honestly, people are like, well, Batman's not a ninja. No, Raiden is like the farthest thing from a ninja you can get and still have him be considered a ninja. Raiden can use his special invisibility powers. He can manipulate lightning to some extent, and he's got what is called a solution radar that tips him off about the, his surroundings and his foe. He also has enhanced sight. He can absorb energy from other cyborg ninjas after he kills them to boost his you know, energy levels. And in his Jack the Ripper mode, he has increased all of his stats, including precision. Now, Raiden carries a multitude of firearms and explosives, but you don't give a crap about that. You're here to talk. You, you're, you're here to hear me talk about the high-frequency blade, which basically vibrates super fast, so it can cut through anything by weakening its molecular structure. Think like Captain America's shield if it was a sword and used for pure aggressive offense. 
Now he's strong enough to cut down large Metal Gears and fight other enhanced Super Soldiers like Armstrong. He can move at Mach 4 and 73 casually, but if you get him pissed off and he goes Jack the Ripper, he can go at 2.6% the speed of light. Raiden's also super strong as he's capable of suffering multiple gunshots and multiple blows from Armstrong. Raiden's also an uh, expert fighter and has been trained to kill people since he was a child, and he was taught by Solid as Snake to fight, and he has his own self-taught style, which mixes break breakdancing, capoeira, and other martial arts with his swords. Uh, with his sword skills, and it's kind of a unique way of fighting that's hard to explain. But Raiden does suffer from PTSD, and his Jack the Ripper mode makes him lose control and only lasts so long. Alright, before we get into the battle, let me just set the circumstances. So, they are going to be in the middle of like a foresty area, and they do not know anything about each other. All they know is they have pictures of the person's like face. Kind of like a mugshot. That way they know who they're hunting down, but they have no prep time. They don't know their name. They don't know anything they, they can do. They just know who to kill. So with those set, let's go right into the battle. Knives is walking through the woods when a batarang flies past her head. Knives looks over to see Batman who hops down from the tree. Knives runs over and slashes at Batman who dodges, sucker punches at her, and then kicks her against a tree. Knives starts to get up but can't find Batman. She looks to see a batarang fly past her uh, face as it explodes, knocking her to the ground. Knives gets back up and runs over, uh, runs into the woods. Leonardo is walking through the, an open field as a ninja star flies towards him. He blocks the star with his sword. He then looks over to see Genji with his blade drawn. Genji throws three ninja stars and dashes at Leonardo who dodges the stars but gets slashed by Genji's sword. Leonardo turns behind him, to, uh, t turns behind him and slashes with both swords. Genji then blocks and jumps back. Leonardo throws one of his swords at Genji and then starts running at him. Leonardo slashes at Genji, who blocks, but he then grabs his other sword from mid-air and slashes at Genji, cutting open his leg. Leonardo goes to crack his kneecap when he hears, GET OVER HERE! Scorpion chain, uh, chain, Scorpion's chain blade flies through Leonardo's arm and pulls him in towards Scorpion, who kicks Leonardo, cracking his skull open. Ah, uh, cracking his skull. Genji then leaves as Scorpion throws a fireball, burning Leonardo, who barely manages to escape. Knives is walking through the forest, heavily injured as and bleeding as she sees Ibuki walking by. Knives runs up, grabs her, and kisses Ibuki, healing her wounds. Ibuki then pushes her off and grabs uh, grabs Knives' arm and then punches her in the rib with a key blast, sending her flying against a tree. Ibuki throws a kunai at her, but the kunai is blocked by her knife as, she, uh, as it flies through the air. Ibuki turns and runs as Raiden appears from the shadows and shoves his blade through Knives and splits her in half once to slash. Raiden begins to walk away from the murder spot when he's hit in the back of the head by a ninja star. Raiden looks over to his shoulder to see Genji standing there. Raiden then rushes over and slashes at Genji who blocks. The two struggle and clash for a second, but before Genji's sword can snap, he dashes back and then spins his, uh, spins his blade as a green dragon spins around as his blade. He dashes forward continuously, dashing from all angles at Raiden. He then lands at, on the ground after the last couple of slashes, and he sheaths his sword as Raiden collapses on the ground. Genji starts to walk away when Raiden stands back up and looks pissed. Ryan then runs over and slashes full force at Genji who blocks with his sword last second, but his sword snaps. Genji then uh, tries to throw multiple ninja stars at him, but is impaled and gutted before he can grab one. Raiden runs into the woods. Leonardo is watching from a tree as he sees Ibuki and Strider fighting. Ibuki goes to kick Strider who slashes at her, cutting off one of her arms. Strider then summons a robot tiger that tackles Ibuki and bites her throat out. Leonardo goes to jump at, out of the trees to attack Strider, but he's grabbed by Batman's grappling hook that goes around his neck and brings him in close to Batman. Batman then starts to sh uh, punch him repeatedly with shot gauntlets as Leonardo, is, uh, as Leonardo tries to struggle to get out of the grab. Leonardo manages to cut the rope and he looks at Batman who goes in for another punch, but Leonardo catches his fist and throws him against a tree, impaling him on a branch. Leonardo goes to the rest goes to the uh, goes to rest as a fire erupts in front of him and Scorpion kicks him back and throws his chain blade through his head and tears it off. Scorpion vanishes in flames as Strider jumps to attack him. It's over to see Strider. The two draw their blades and run forward, slashing, uh, slashing their blades at one another. They then collide. Strider summons a, mega br uh, a mecha bird that flies over and drops a bomb on Raiden. Raiden stumbles back and Strider slashes at him, cutting open his chest. Raiden then slashes at Strider, who blocks. Strider summons a large horde of mecha tigers and mecha birds, but Raiden jumps between the animals, destroying them in a flurry of slashes, and they both stand and rush at each other before jumping into the air. Uh, rushing past each other with their blades out. Strider and Raiden then fall uh, then fall to the ground as Strider falls down dead with multiple slash wounds. Scorpion comes up behind Raiden and wraps his chain around his neck and drags him into the nether realm. 
Scorpion lets go of Raiden as they fall into the into the Nether Realm. He then they stand there and look at each other, but then Scorpion launches out his hand blade, and Raiden catches it and pulls him in and bashes Scorpion's head with the handle of his blade, cracking his skull. Scorpion teleports behind Raiden and hits him with a flaming punch, and then follows up with a hellfire burn afterwards. Raiden then goes up, uh, go, gets back up and slashes Scorpion, but Scorpion teleports behind him and cuts off his right arm and fractures his skull with a heavy punch. Raiden looks at his bloody arm and starts to laugh. Scorpion shoots a fireball at Raiden, who runs past it and slashes Scorpion, who blocks with his swords. Raiden puts more pressure on it and snaps Scorpion's swords. Raiden then slashes at Scorpion, breaking multiple of his ribs. Scorpion then throws out two chain blades, but Raiden catches them. Scorpion then sends flames down, burning Raiden, and then launches out one more uh, chain blade, impaling Raiden through the head as he rips it off and throws it into the lava, and then kicks Raiden's body into the lava. Our winner is Scorpion. This probably came as a shock to a lot of people, but when I researched it, really, honestly, I found something to tip this in Scorpion's favor. So let's go ahead and pick apart this match. So really, this match comes down to Ryder, Strider, uh, Strider, Raiden, Strider, and Scorpion. So I'll, I'll pick apart their stats towards the end, but let's just start addressing the characters who lost. So Knives, really, the only reason she can, she'd come in so high in the battle is while her tactics and arsenal are lesser, she does have the she does have great stats. And if she were to find Ibuki, she could technically kiss her and heal her wounds, as that's the, how the move lesbian kiss works in the games. She kisses Kim and yeah, heals her. Now, Strider's high-tech gear does allow him to keep up with Raiden and Scorpion, even though he has lesser uh, lesser stats. But his gear and tech definitely allow him to keep up, kind of like Batman. So now on to the four who didn't really make it into the top. Batman's tech and intelligence and stealth would definitely allow him to take out and uh, fight and take out lesser opponents, like, you know, knives, but... And that's really only if he plays his cards right. But he doesn't really have the stats or anything to be able to fight Raiden or Scorpion and live. Genji, another one. He's actually incredibly weak compared to the rest of the cast at large building level at best. He can't really handle the heavy hitters like Raiden and all that. Plus, if Raiden were to kill Genji, he would just get more energy and heal up. Ibuki is around the same level as Knives and Strength, but her lack of a weapon would leave her rather vulnerable and just lead to her inevitable death. And finally, Leonardo, who stands the best chance of these bottom four, with his skills and weapons that would allow him to keep up in battle against some of the heavier hitters, just not Scorpion or Raiden. So on to our top two ninjas, Scorpion and Raiden. Well, their stats are pretty much exactly dead even. They, uh, so this really came down to X factors. And yes, Raiden has his Jack the Ripper mode that makes him incredibly fast and strong, but Scorpion could technically kill him instantly by teleporting him into the Nether Realm into a lava pit. Well, or if he just teleports him into the Nether Realm, he'll get repeated. He'll just keep getting stronger with no limit. Whereas Raiden's Ripper mode only ha uh, does have a time limit. And I think Scorpion, with his moves like teleportation and creating clones and everything, is more than capable of surviving that time limit and eventually overpowering Raiden. So our winner is Scorpion.